Your Highnesses, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I stand here today with a sense of profound loss and feeling of utter helplessness. I feel very, very helpless because I could not prevent the tragedy that befell my friend. Welcome to the moment of truth. I want you to stay tuned to the end. You just heard Aliko Dangote. He was so sorry. He's been crying at a Uigwe funeral. And uh, he actually kind of blaming himself for not doing enough to prevent what had happened to Uigwe, his wife, uh, Mr. Bimbola, their son, and all that. Why was he saying that? There are four tributes in this video that I want you to listen to. And I'll be coming in, chipping in, in between each, each one of them. And I, we are going somewhere. And we will get to the bottom of this. I'm just doing my own analysis. And with the information I have, I'll be able to tell you something. Stay tuned. My brother, my mentee, and a very, very loyal friend for that matter, Herbert Uigwe, CFR, his beloved wife, Chizoba, and his son, Chizi. Herbert was a visionary role model, in fortitude, <clears throat> and a perfectionist who gave so much of himself, is no longer here with us. But his transformative strides are seen all over our economic landscape, and even in the heart of social milieu in Nigeria and the rest of the world. Many people, including his family members, friends, and associates, church brethren, mentees, and former acquaintances have written and said a lot about a man who broke all records and pushed boundaries. A realm of banking and applied his fine skills to reshape the entire sector. His legacy in philanthropy will always never be forgotten. I choose to remember his long friendship undivided loyalty and his zest for life among numerous other attributes. He was a pillar of strength and support for me, my family, and our businesses. He was not afraid to go out on a limb to help me untie the several knots that actually came up as our organization grew and flourished. He was proud to be part of my success story, and I'm proud to name him my devoted friend, mentee, and brother. <clears throat> Harvard's wise counsel and relentless support was central to the growth and expansion of our organization, the Dangoti Group. My family and I will forever cherish his warm friendship and heart of care. It is really very difficult to find another Harvard. I owe him an eternal debt of gratitude. Although Herbert never joined the military line, he could be referred to as a soldier of courage and distinction. The incredible courage he exemplified in overcoming adversity and the discipline he manifested in achieving managerial standards of the highest order was awesome. His inexpressible energy and the capacity for total concentration was extraordinary outcomes gave me the ray of hope, strength, 
and I'm flagging zeal to keep sight on my ultimate goal in my business. His big, sh uh, his big push led my foray into the previous uncharted oil and gas sector, which is now central to our growth as a conglomerate. Herbert will always remind me that, look, my mentor, we will get there, just hang in there, and we will beat any imagination. I remain eternally grateful to Herbert, who immensely supported me in the completion of our project, and he said that, look, my mentor, if I have to give you my life, I will do so. Let's carry on. Herbert Courage was second to none, and he was really, really fearless. He was never scared of anything. Herbert and I share a common principle of perseverance, which is one of the cardinal virtues of success in business. Harry Truman, the 33rd president of America from 1945 to 1953, once recounted in his memoirs that being president is like riding a tiger and a man has to keep riding or be swallowed. A president has to be cons constantly on top of events or if he hesitates, events will soon be on top of him. I never felt I could let up a single moment Herbert prodded me when I hesitated, gave me a nudge when I was weak and consoled me with the words of my mentor, hang in there, we will remain you know, he will remain unforgettable, friend, mentee, and a brother, and I feel that I'm part of the family. Bidding farewell to a brother, mentee, and a very, very loyal friend, his beloved wife, Chizoba, and his son, Chizi, is an extremely arduous task for me, but I'm consoled by the fact that Herbert has run a successful race and has gone to a better place. To immortalize my beloved friend, my brother and mentee, I have actually decided to name our major refinery and petrochemical road out of the 120 kilometer. The biggest road will be now named Herbert Wigwe. Because what I want is that after we have all gone, people will still be there, visit the refinery and they will find out who was this Herbert Wigwe. We are now moving on to Dakpo, Abiodun, the Ogun state governor. Uh, Aliko Dangote was very broken. He was crying like a baby. And when big guys are crying like this, something hits them. And that thing that hit them, they will have prevented it. And it's like an insult to them from where that thing came from. Stay tuned. Personally, I can't thank him enough for believing in me, for being my brother and my friend, for supporting my dreams, for supporting my aspirations and my vision for the good people of Ogun State from the prompt payment of salaries my first day in the office, to the issuance of a private bond, and several visible infrastructure projects that crisscross the landscape of Ugu State, particularly the Gateway International Airport, the Epey Jebudi Expressway, and several others. The history of the new Ogo State will not be complete without the mention of his contributions. He made me appreciate. Thank you. He made me appreciate what he called the speed of trust in governance, which was to hit the ground running so as to execute and complete 
all my plant projects in a tenure. Herbert was always there to provide a bridge. In everyone. The next one now is Sawolu, the governor of Lagos State. You see what he did for um, Biodun. He helped all of them to get to where they are. He supported them and he did a lot of things. He was a confidant, a supporter to many of them. And we'll get there. Stay tuned. I'm going somewhere. Um, so four nights ago, it was actually on Friday night. I was scrolling down my phone, trying to look for some other guy called Herbert. And mistakenly, it was our Herbert, my Herbert, my friend, my brother, my advisor, Herbert Wigwe, whose number popped out again. Why so? On Thursday, February 8th, he and I chatted and spoke for a while. And so with phones, the name and the last conversation will be the first that will pop out. Very usual of him. Excellency, you, my radar says you are in London. I said, my chairman, you are wrong this time. I'm on my way from Beijing, China, and I'll be getting home tomorrow. But of course, the very next, I called Shola, where exactly are you? We're in London. Ah, the goes. And we chatted, and I said, we haven't seen this year a lot of times. And he says, I will see you in exactly six days. This was on a Friday, sorry, on a Thursday. And he says, he'll be back the next Wednesday, and he will see me on Thursday. Of course, he still called me back later that night to complete the chat message that we had. And he said he was just coming out of his board meeting and we'll see as soon as he gets back. This was the last conversation that I will keep for a long time on my phone. I knew Herbert Wigwe about 34 years ago with his old school friend. I'm sure he's sitting here somewhere, Kaudi Ayeni. Kaudi and I were a childhood friend. And I was working in an oil service company then. And I think he just joined Capital Merchant Bank. Those days when we have our six weeks on and three weeks off, you come to Lagos. You come and eat under the bridge with lunch of vouchers with your friends in the financial world. And I used to envy them a lot, because back then, it was only safety boots and t-shirts that we have. But they had well-tailored suits that they got from key sites behind Mandela's. <laughs> and so with a lot of our child, we'll go under the bridge and have something to eat. We all moved on. We all got married. And from time to time, in Guarantee Trust, I mean, Kade knows the story, from Guarantee Trust, Harvard was being a fearless banker way back then. And our paths cross once in a while. All of his siblings, Emeka, we met on the street in Lagos, hustling. Joyce, we met professionally. Peggy, we met in the banking industry. Stella, I just met her. But it's been an interesting journey together. And a few times in and out of the banking industry, in public service, we will meet now and then. And he's always a man that has good things to tell, had good stories to share, had a lot of encouragement to give. Of course, we fast track. I became the governor 
of Lagos State. And our friendship, our brotherly friendship, bloomed further. Harvard was one of the very first people that supported my ambition generously. And I said to him, and I said to him, brother, I'm not going there to disappoint you. I will leave, I will work, and I will come back to represent the friendship that we all have together. And he said, count me in. I will give you all the support that you require. Him and my other brother, Aiboje, had given me the support from the very first day as the governor of the state. It's countless. It's numerous. It's unbelievable how a man can truly share everything he has with you. Uche is here. Gilbert is here somewhere. Harvard makes it a point of duty every time he's flying out. He drops in at the Lagos South Marina. His greeting is always the same way. Excellency, you don't give up. We'll do it. No, 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 we'll do it. Don't worry. Those things, we'll get it done. You don't have time, oh? Think about it. It's only four years, it's going to come now. Let's do it. Those were his words of encouragement. And he will sit back with his carcass biscuits. He doesn't take cognac like he do with cow. He takes Maltina or Malta Guinness. And that has been our journey for the past four and a half years or so. You heard Sonwolu as well, how he helped him with everything. He was the backbone for majority of them, helping them to build whatever they want to build and be there for them, loyal to them. Everybody was saying he was loyal and everything. We are now moving on to this new CBN, Cardoso, and listening to what he said. And I'll be back now to tell you what I know about what Cardoso is trying to do now. Herbert played a pivotal role in transforming Access Bank into one of Nigeria's foremost financial institutions. Herbert's vision, diligence, and commitment elevated Access Bank to a position of prominence, not only within Nigeria, but across the continent and the global financial arena. As the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, I had the opportunity of close interaction with Herbert over the course of the last few months. Indeed, he visited me twice, his concern evident in his inquiries about how he could help alleviate the challenges the economy was facing. I will continue to value the professional contributions he made at our meetings and appreciate how insightful and thoughtful they were. Herbert's commitment extended far beyond business. One touching memory that truly captures Herbert's spirit was his involvement in the National Arts Theatre Project, which had been spoken about quite extensively. A private sector-led initiative, he led a team of dedicated and impressive professionals driven by a shared vision of revitalizing Nigeria's cultural landscape. Wigwe University, of course, was another indication of so i got this information like uh, almost three four days ago now that 
Tony Elumelu is on the list of people that borrowed from Nigeria. They are owing 41.5 billion naira. So, you know, CBN money, uh, governor said he's been working with, you know, he's new. So, he's been working with Albert, with Abbott. Whatever, whatever, you heard all this explanation. And um, the governor of Lagos State as well spoke to him on the 8th of February, just a day before the incident. And there was a conversation and they, they didn't complete everything. Now, let's now move on to Hike. Because Hike too gave an emotional tribute to his brother, his partner, and his friend. In another, um, what was it called? In another video, I'm going to be reading now because it's a long list of all the elites that is hoeing RCCG members. The woman that died in the helicopter, helicopter crash was in that list, is in that list. She's in that list. So I'm going to be doing another video to explain it to you. And you know that Abbott hosted um, Otedola and uh, what was it called? Ali Kodangote in his house, his new home. That was December last year. He hosted there. And you know that Otedola and Elumelu, Tony Elumelu, they were cro close friends. But Tony betrayed Otedola. I've done a video, I mentioned it there, that his own share in the uh, Transcorp, Tony wanted to buy it, and he lied to him that it was the white man that wanted to buy the share. And Otedola has already said, okay, that's fine. Only for Otedola to go deeper, digging deep, and I realized that it was Tony that pretend to be that white person. So there's a cold war going on. All the information this uh, new CBN posted now, do they link it to have come from Habats or he gave information or something we do not know. What we knew is that Abba was on a mission and uh, he, he was stopped and his death was like a real shock to his own clique because they, they, all of them, they have their own clique. And that um, disgraceful party of Iluyo Made and Tony dancing there. So it's making sense now. I will see, yeah, let, 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 let's, let's move on to Ike and listen to what Ike said. A lot of people said things though, but I don't have room for it in this video. Yes. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, ever since that Friday, I have watched a family cope with grief with such spiritual resolve, such dignity and strength. But that I might have expected from adults. But from Tochi, David, Hannah, and Okachi, and the responsibility that all of us as adults in their lives have, and the fears about how difficult this time would be. You children have been truly amazing.
My brother and partner, Herbert, spoke publicly about his belief that time waits for no one. And Herbert lived life as a man on a mission who had limited time within which to complete his work. The fierce urgency of now drove him to pursue and attain heights of excellence that match the best of the best across the world. Yet despite the mountains scaled and the heights attained, Herbert still worried about whether he would have sufficient time to realize his ultimate dream, a dream we shared for a transformed Africa. February 9th, 2024, the day Herbert Chizoba Chizi and Bimbo died, along with two pilots, was a terrible and tragic day for us all. But believe you me, ladies and gentlemen, on that day, in a way that happens to very, very, very few human beings in history. As the breaking news of this tragic accident reverberated across the world, time stood still in honor of Herbert Wigwe. Let me explain. You see, time stands still at those moments when we all, mankind, stops for something that makes us reflect on that come immediately to mind, and which I chose because I think you can relate to them. When Herbert died, time stood still. enabling millions who already knew him, but hundreds of millions more who had never heard of him, to pause in unison, to learn and reflect about this iconic African leader, and to understand the full potential of what he was about to do for humanity. The breaking story was a wave felt around the world. As the news hit mobile phones, TV screens, computers, from north to south and east to west, millions of people went onto the internet searching and examining reading and watching to find out just who is this man, Herbert Wigwe. And time stood still because God wanted the world to know and to understand who his son, Herbert Wigwe, was and is and what he truly represents. And so they learned about his early life and formative years they learned about his family life, his kids, his siblings, his parents. They learned about his professional exploits and philanthropy. They even learned that Aigbuje, the person referred to as his brother and partner, was neither his spouse nor biologically related to him. Most importantly, they learned that this man, Herbert Wigwe, is proof that Africa is still capable of producing outstanding men and women with the capacity to change the world in a good and a positive way. Tochi, Hannah, David, tell Okachi that Uncle Aigbuje said, there are moments and there are moments this is a moment. Herbert was committed to building an African continent where men and women can aspire and live to their full potential. He isn't the only person 
committed to this objective. But there are very few people in the world whose life and legacy in what he was about to embark on. A collaborative commitment to building an African continent we will all be proud of. In memory of Herbert, let the work begin now. Thank you all for coming to honor my brother. You just heard that go. He broke down, he wept, and that's why we great daughter was standing by him just to console him. What I could see from everything was like sense of loss, sense of um, regrets. What happened to Wigwe, they now know what happened to him, but they cannot say it, they cannot tell the whole world. But the body language, their actions and everything, I think they know where the heat came from and the source of the heat and the reason for the heat. That's all I can see from what is happening. And there be a revenge because CBN governor has now put in Tony Elumelu and others out there to dry. And I will see you on my next video. Bye for now. Let me know your thoughts.